I'm Nagani, police. Police? I'll get ashore, all right. This wasn't exactly first class passage. But this isn't exactly a first class watch either. Don't forget to overwind it. Sugar, I forgot you drive on the left in this country. No wonder they have a low opinion of the white man out here. I repeat, sir, the bath water is not hot. But the climate, sir. I am, however, paying for hot water, and I shall expect hot water. I do not believe we have the honor of your reservations. And without reservations... Yeah, I know you're all sold out for a convention, huh? But there is no more accommodation. Perhaps if you try around the corner, you would find more suitable rates. Rates? How do you know I'm not a millionaire? Well, uh... Don't worry about it, I'm not. My brother's already made the reservations. The name is Campbell. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Ca... Did you say Campbell? Yeah, like in George Campbell. He made the reservations last week. Well, I... Uh... Unfortunately, Mr. Campbell, your room is not made up yet. If you would wait on the terrace, there is a bar there. That's for me. Be careful of that luggage. Mud in your eye, ladies. There he is. 
Thank you. Mr. Campbell? Yeah? My name is Ralph Hoyt. I was a close friend of your brother. What do you mean, was? I'm afraid the news I bring is not very pleasant. Should we perhaps talk inside? No, this is all right for me. As a missionary, Mr. Campbell, it has often been my duty to deliver bad news. This time, even I find it difficult to interpret the Lord's intentions. Well, then don't bother. Very well. The night before last, your brother was murdered. Murdered? He was killed by a leopard man. Leopard man? What's that part of this Momo business? No, no, not quite the same. The leopard men were a religious cult. They were encouraged by the witch doctors to oppose all white settlers. We thought they died out. But since the Mama started, it would seem that they've been resurrected. I'm afraid your brother was their first victim. Where did it happen? At his home, out beyond Mombasa. Sorry, there isn't much one can say. But it may be some consolation to you to know that George was not only liked, but respected. If anyone can be said to have lived by the golden rule, he did. Golden rule? I suppose that's where you come in. Well, I try to observe it. And somewhat to my surprise, it frequently works. Or perhaps when you clean it. Oh, Anne. Oh, there you are. I found your message, Uncle Ralph. I thought I might be of some help. Thank you, my dear. Uh, this is George's brother. This is Anne Wilson, my niece. Hi. How do you do? I'm terribly sorry about your brother. Sit down, my dear. All right, so George is dead. What did he leave? What did you say? I said, what did he leave? Money, land, or whatever? Naturally, we haven't yet had time to inquire into the estate. If you're interested in money, Mr. Campbell, I can tell you. He spent everything he had on his last project. He must have left something. George was the original penny-a-day boy. Surely we can leave all that till later. In the meantime, we've made arrangements for the funeral on Tuesday at George's place. Of course, you'll come with us. Thanks, I'm not much of a hand at funerals. Tiari Buena. Uh, your room's ready. Oh. Thanks. What kind of man is that? Now, Anne, as an anthropologist, you must know that people handle grief differently. We must allow him to lick his wounds in his own way. You met Kimball? Yeah. I just thought I'd drop by and see if there was anything I could do for you. George told me so much about you. What'd you say your name was? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm Gil Rossi. I've been a professional hunter around these parts so long, I'm afraid I expect everyone to know me. Sit down, will you? Thank you. Cigar? No, thanks. I... It's uh, pretty fancy. Just a little trinket uh, from one of my grateful clients. Got uh, two leopards and an elephant. Rossi, huh? I didn't know George had gone in for that safari routine. You're so right. George was much too solid a character for the white hunter business. It was the other way around. I went into business with George. Hmm. Oh, no, thank you. I never touch it till after sundown. My one good habit. You went in business with George, huh? Last I heard, he was teamed with a guy named Hastings. That's right. Then they ran out of capital, and that's where I came in. You sound like we grew up on the same bottle. 
what do you have in mind? And just a perhaps I could be of some service. If it's a question of cash, I could give you something for George's interest. There's the equipment we own and the land. There was also a mine, wasn't there? A mine big enough so he cabled me to come down here and help him work it. A mine? Yes, I suppose you could call it that. What else did he tell you? Oh, that's enough. He didn't send me $500 expense money just because he was lonesome. And with all that money, you still chose to travel by Dow. The message service is pretty good around here, isn't it? Now you'll have to excuse me. I've got to get back to my laundry. Oh, of course. Should I see you at the funeral? I don't think so. My interest is in what happens after the undertaker leaves. I see. Uh, you might brush me up on one thing. This Ann uh, Wilson. Ann? Now you speak my language. She was George's very good friend. And mine. in my pocket. So when they bring the bill, I add up all the matches. If they don't add up, there's something wrong. They never add up. Not a bad idea at that. No reason they shouldn't add up. I just want to thank you for the matches. That's all right. You have a very lovely wife. You know, it's not often nice people like you come in here. I, I want to buy you a drink. Uh, oh, no, thanks. Not now. We'll finish just what we got here, and then we can leave you. Thanks all. You know, we're seeing the pound. Oh, but if it weren't so late, I'd join you. But unfortunately, I have another day. Oh, that's too bad. I've heard they have some very interesting nightclubs out here. I bet this is quite a town for a bachelor. Eh? I never go to nightclubs. The last time I was in one was in Aden. And, you know, I walked in with $500. You know, what I walked out with was nothing. It must have been quite a nightclub. It was. And that's why I've got to see a girl about a missionary. And that's lovely why. Wait a minute, you're wasting your time. I'm broke. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't see you. Hey, you broke my bottle. You broke my broke my bottle.
Hello? Hello there. Missionary girl. Missionary girl. Missionary girl. Will you stop making that noise? There you are. I, I want to talk to you. You're drunk. Now get out of here. I still want to talk to you. Come on, open up. But I don't want to talk to you. Now go away. I'm going to talk to you. I promise I'll never touch another drop. Well, you got a head, too? Here. Go ahead. You don't want to suit yourself. Cut it out. I need this. Would you like a bromo? What'd you say? I said, would you like a bromo? Boy, I've had some hangovers. Never one like this. It was nice of you to spend the night with Alice, but if you don't mind, Mr. Campbell, I'd like to get down to work now. Alice? The chimp. I study her for human reactions of certain types. Come on. Come on, here we go. Out you go. You're a writer. Oh. I knew a lady writer once in Saudi Arabia. What a sponge. Mr. Campbell, I'm an anthropologist. I specialize in that branch of natural history which deals with the human species. From what I saw of you last night, I've discovered a whole new field. Oh, that's how I got here. You shanghaied me, huh? You used me for your experiments. George once described you as a perpetual sophomore. He understated it. George, yeah, that's how I came here. I wanted to ask you some questions. Hey, but how did I happen to stay? I hit you over the head. You hit me over the head? What for? Well, you kept things from getting out of hand. You see, Mr. Campbell, not all of my work in anthropology has been confined to books. I've had quite a little experience in the field. Well, what's that got to do with hitting a nice, friendly guy like me on the head? Everything. You're the type that starts out asking questions. The questions become more and more personal, and so do you. You hit me on suspicion. I just wanted to ask a few questions. There was no need to slug me. That's what you think. All right, come on, get out of here. Your hotel is three blocks down and one to the right. Well, wait a minute. I still want to ask those questions. I answered most of them last night while I was putting you to bed. Number one, George and I were not engaged. Number two, Gil Rossi was a partner of George's. Number three, George found an old mine. That's all I know. Say, uh, I'm sorry if I was a little troublesome last night. But I don't understand about uh, her making a pass at you. You're not my type. <laughs> That's the nicest thing you've said today. You also wanted to know about the leopard men, and I explained the various cults. Well, maybe you did, but I kind of lost the point. Well, the point is, I, I don't think George was killed by a leopard man. Why? They haven't been in existence for years. Well, your uncle seems to buy it. My uncle's judgment of the African is inclined to be emotional. Mine is not. Out. I was just leaving. Thanks. 
Hey. Could you shrink my head down a bit? Oh, please. Mr. Campbell. Hi. Something for you. Go ahead. It's just a pick-me-up. Tomato juice and lemon. Oh, no, thanks. Um, no, two hairs of the dog that bit you. Oh, huh. thanks. Oh, boy, I, I sure needed that. May not make a new man out of me, but it helps. The golden rule, you know. Thanks. I'm afraid Anne hasn't much patience with hangovers. Particularly after the, what shall we say, commotion you made last night. Mm, yeah, well, you know how it is. I, I mean, excuse me. I'm... Just a bender. It's very understandable. We each react to grief in our own way. You know, for a guy in your racket, you're pretty broad-minded, Reverend. I wish you could spread a little of that around with your niece. She's been in the deep freeze too long. No, oh, I wouldn't say that. It's just that you got between her and her typewriter. <laughs> For your information, Mr. Campbell, I'm not a reverend. Unfortunately, I only got the call when it was too late to enter a seminary. So I chose to devote my life to this forsaken country, and so far I haven't regretted it. Well, I guess I'd better be getting along. Thanks a lot, Mr. Hoyt. Uh, maybe I'll see you again sometime. I certainly hope so. Uh, forgive my mentioning it, but having arrived here to find this unexpected tragedy, could it be that you're rather short of funds? Well, uh... You might call it that, yeah. To be kept here is only an added expense. Unless, of course, you've changed your mind about coming with us to the funeral. No, I, I've got no plans of any kind, except maybe ask a few questions about that mine of George's, if that's all. From what I hear, that was just wishful thinking. A gold mine that had long since been abandoned. I'm afraid George was something of a dreamer. Yeah. He did most of his dreaming about money. Oh, that's as maybe. Well, there you are. It isn't much, but at least it'll help to pay the hotel bill. Oh, hello, dear. Ah, good morning. Thanks, Mr. Hoyt. Uncle Ralph, I wish you wouldn't help every lame dog that comes in here. Don't you have trouble enough raising money to help your Africans without throwing it away on people like him? Oh, no, Anne, the important thing is not that people drink. It's why they drink. Mm. Did you take your medicine this morning? Uh... You didn't. You're going to need some more of this. I'll pick it up in town. I'd well, better get enough for the journey. I can't afford to go down with heat exhaustion this trip. You really shouldn't go at all. Oh, no, Anne. I know. It's the least I can do. I was so fond of George. In fact, I hope that someday... I know that, too. Now, you take it easy while I'm gone. You have to look after yourself hmm. for my sake. See you later. judging him. I'd like to be surprised once in a while. I too. I think you'd better get in the shape. This heat isn't good for you. Come on. Well, maybe I will. Uh, jump on, Marty. are showing, Sherry. My thoughts at the moment concern Uncle Ralph. Why don't you put your problems onto Uncle Gil? You could do worse, you know. I might even give up being a white hunter. And disappoint all the tourists? You know what I think? 
I think that perhaps you're just a little bit jealous. You're right. Every night I go to sleep counting your conquests. Hey, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Not quite as good as hitting a guy over the head, but it'll do. Excuse me. I suppose there's an answer to this. Sure. I still think there's a buck around here with my name on it. That's all you ever think about, isn't it? Now, you know better than that. You're not very funny, Mr. Campbell. Oh, now, listen. Don't get mad. You gave me an idea last night. Maybe one of George's friends is a leopard man. Hi, oh, Mr. Campbell. What a surprise. Kind of surprised me, too. Naturally, we're very glad. May I ask what made you change your mind? I still had some questions to ask. I figured I might as well be with the people who could answer them. We've already told you everything we know. Yeah, well, there's still Hastings. Maybe George has covered something more valuable than gold. But if it was an old abandoned mine, Well, what? George had worked some of these played out gold mines in Canada before he came down here. You know what they discovered after they extracted the gold? Uranium. Uranium? It's very hard to believe, Mr. Campbell, very hard. Of course, I know a little about mining. Anne says I lack the practical touch that even a mission finds necessary. Uh, will you excuse me? I've got to have a conference with one of my partners. So because I offer you a little something for George's interest, when I already know that there's a probability of uranium, that makes me a crook. It doesn't exactly make you an all-American boy, either. Though I'm not very interested in being an all-American boy. By passport, I'm French. By profession, international. We'll sing our national anthems later. You don't know whether George actually discovered uranium. Hmm? And it wasn't with George all the time. I've got good news for you. He found uranium, all right, two weeks ago. What makes you say that? He had written me in his last letter that the Geiger counter he ordered from the States had arrived. And so? So that makes you another hustler. He sent a two-word message along with that $500. You know what the message said? It clicks. I like you, Matt. You have a certain sense of realism that George lacked. We could do very well together, you and I. Let's cut the bouquets. I just take the dough. That is exactly what I have in mind. Now that George is dead, Hastings is probably discouraged, or I've seemed a little frightened. And if we combine our interests and he is out, huh? mm -hmm. I'll wait till I meet Hastings. He might make me a better offer. So that's Mombasa, huh? Dates from the 11th century. It was once the home of the Oriental slave trade. Today, to quote the guidebook, it's the gateway to darkest Africa, where man is never far from violent death. A city of strange cults and stranger sins. And don't drink the water. I'm sure Mr. Campbell won't. in all my life. What do you expect, Humphrey Bogart? George was right. He always said your real vocation in life was deflating stuffed shirts. Nah, that was his version. No, I hadn't seen George in so long I'd almost forgotten what he looked like. But all we had in common was the same name. Nothing alike, hmm? Nothing. He was the thinking type. I'm strictly physical. I like to go downtown nights. Say, what are you doing tonight? Whatever it is, it's without you. And what people? Hey, mate, will you look at the front for me, please? It'll be tricky. Right.
You didn't catch him? No, but you ought to make somebody around here very happy. Just what do you mean by that? I know who did the bowling, and I'd like to find out who set me up in the alley. Out of the way! Every leopard man in a city like Mombasa? It is possible. Well, we shall know more when we get there. How's that? The leopard man always followed what the cult called the lines of the sun. That is to say, the claws will always rip the body from upper left to lower right. If they weren't that way, then it wasn't a leopard man. It still doesn't change the score. One down and one to go. There's a big dance going on behind the hut. Would you like to take a look? Sure, I'm always ready for a new thrill. How about you, Mr. Hoyt? Uh, no, thank you. The chief and I have business to discuss. Bari uh, Ashamu. is livelier over there.
spring rain or something, these kids could cause a flood. No, these dances don't mean anything. They're just having fun. Those are the old folks having their waltz. These are the jitterbugs. in the East? Oh, about three years, mostly with an oil company in uh, Saudi Arabia. I got tired of nothing but uh, Saturday night crap games. So when George Cable could use me down here, I was glad to come. You know much about mining? Worked a few mines in Colorado before I drifted into the oil game. If I had to, I could work a shift. You expect to stay here? in front of all these people. stuff in back of the house. Leave my people here. Yeah. Well, this is certainly a surprise. Surprise? But I sent you word we were coming by one of the mission boys. He should have been here yesterday. Yesterday? Hey, uh, Katimi! Yes, Buona? That boy whose body was found on the road yesterday, was he one of the mission boys? That is right, Buana. He is one the leopard man killed. Leopard man killed? No. But his mother was one of our first converts. To have to break it to her. I didn't see the boy myself. The natives took him off into the jungle as soon as he was found. As for this leopard man business, I don't know. Funny the real one's around. I shot one myself only this morning. Don't tell me you're becoming a white hunter. I thought you always had such a low opinion of them. That depends on the hunter. I didn't bring you into this enterprise, Rossi. That was George's idea. Uh, Elliot, I'm sorry. This is George's brother, Matt. Oh. I'm glad to see you, Mr. Campbell. But I wish you were under better circumstances. All right. How soon can we have the funeral? Funeral? Why, the funeral was held yesterday. You didn't waste any time, did you? Well, perhaps there was some reason why you didn't want us to see the body. What are you talking about? Now, look, Mr. Campbell, the police were here and I had their permission. You forget, I didn't know any of you were coming. That's true. But Anne thought, and perhaps with reason, that it might not have been a leopard man who killed him. The marks on the body could help us to determine that. We could exhume the body. Oh, that's impossible. He was cremated. When you have a funeral, you do things up right, Hastings. Why did you cremate him? That was his wish. I never heard him mention it. Did anyone else? I heard him. Now, the police have had their investigation. Would you like to make a private one? There's no reason I shouldn't. I'm getting all of the second hand. From the way things have been going, George's death could be catching. Huh? That means there was a deliberate attempt on his life in the docks at Mombasa. Apparently, the Campbells aren't too popular in this country. Do you think it might have had something to do with the mine? That depends on how valuable it is. What's your opinion of it? I've never seen it. In fact, I don't even know where it is. You what? George was working on a map, but uh, it disappeared the night he was killed. Disappeared? You expect me to believe that? I've got 1,000 pounds in this deal, and you're not going to cheat me out of it. Are you calling me a liar? Now, listen, I don't care who calls you what. Very funny. Three partners in a mine, the only one in you where was is dead. Now, get this straight. Nobody's getting to that mine without me. If you and Mr. Hoyt will go up to the house, I'll send your things up. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you. Katimi! Yeah, Buona? Alekha Mazigo! You want it. 
You will stay in this room where your brother was killed, Buona? Sure. Why not? You think lightning is going to strike twice? Lightning? I do not know, Buona. I only know I would not stay here. Hey, wait a minute. Do you see the marks on his body? Yes, Buona. They make the line of the sun. It was the leopard man who killed him. I know. Okay. Hastings! Yeah, what is it? Was this where George was working when he was killed? That's right. Look at these indentations. Mm. Andy, maybe we got ourselves a map here. Now, take one more step. Well, that's a fine attitude. I'm just trying to help. Well, go someplace else and help. You know, for a lady anthropologist, you're pretty well stacked. Anthropology has nothing to do with it. You think it's got something to do with the jungle? You know, uh, you being the only cheesecake around here? In your case, yes. Ah, you dropped your soap. I'll get it. Oh, I was just being a gentleman. Well, that's something new. Oh, not really. I've just got a little boiling point. Well, put a lid on it. Because you're obviously the type who responds to climate in a purely physical way. That's me. Say, uh, you think the girls are poor for me? Why don't you ask them? All right, come on, turn around, turn around. I have to get dressed. Poor old George. I never thought he'd end up in a place like this. Don't tell me that hard shell of yours has a soft spot in it. He was my brother. You don't think I'd let somebody kill him and get away with it, do you? I actually don't know. With all your big talk about collecting a buck and... Settling the state, I... When you settle in the state, you collect everything that's owed. And somebody owes me for George. All right, it's your turn. You pour for me, huh? Hey, wait a minute. Oh, different union, huh? Oh, no, well, wait a minute. You said you weren't too sure the leopard men killed that mission boy. You feel the same way about George's death? I can't answer that at the moment, Campbell. I have what I like to regard as a tidy mind. And as yet, all the pieces haven't fitted together. I feel the same way. This leopard man business doesn't make sense, but uh, Uncle Ralph seems to be positive. Positive, yes, my dear. But also at a loss to explain. George was so popular with the natives. And perhaps it had something to do with the mine. I doubt if the leopard men have even heard the word uranium. However, if they have come to life again, we may find it tough getting workers for the mine. That is, if we ever find it. 
We'll find it, all right. We can follow the landmarks from that tracing sheet. Oh, the landmarks are Rossi's department. He's quite an authority on the back country. So I do have some value. I thought that you only loved me for the money I put up for the Geiger counter. Now perhaps you can understand how it is you went exactly received with open arms. Hastings thought there'd just be the two of us to split up the mine. I thought nothing of the kind. You practically accused me of having something to do with George's death ever since you got here. Now, either prove something or shut up. Gil didn't mean it that way, I'm sure. But I did. The native boys tell me that Hastings came running in after George was killed. Nobody seems to know where he was before. I was asleep. So you see, we could both have had the same motive. One less partner. But everybody knows where I was, sweating things out at Liconi. Hmm. We could also have been waiting for a sucker to come to town. How do I know the two of you aren't in this together? That's hardly charitable, man. Neither was George's murder. Well, now that we understand each other, when do we shove off for the mine? We can leave in the morning. But we'll have to travel light. It's rough country. One tent should be enough for the three of us. Perhaps it might be helpful if I were to accompany you. As a younger man, I did have some knowledge of that country. Uncle Ralph, you're not well enough. Oh, I'll be all right, Anne. Besides, there's my work. The Giriama tribe are in that area, and I've been out of touch with them for some time. There may be medicine or supplies I can send them. I've always found that a little medicine helps to spread the gospel. Yes, that would be very nice, Mr. Hoyt, but uh, we can't leave Anne here. That's right. If Uncle Ralph goes, I'm going. Oh, I can manage, my dear. I... No arguments. All right. We both go. Well, if we're all going, I'd better arrange for more boys and equipment. I knew you couldn't leave me. Oh, oh brother. of the claws that killed him. And what are you doing with it? The night your born brother was killed, I heard the scream as I entered the camp. And at the same time, the sound of man running. I followed him. Did you see him? No, Warner. It was only a sound running. He broke through the bush where he lost this claw. When I found your brother was killed by a claw, I hid it. Until the next time you needed it. No, Warner. No one knows that I have it. And why didn't you tell Hastings? I did not think it was wise to tell him. He could have been the man running. But I do not want to think so. And that's all you have to tell me. You think all you have to do is tell me a story This is no story, Buana. You keep the claw. Maybe you will find the other. Then you will know who killed your brother. You ought to get out of here, will you? Thank you. 
Right so far, this appears to be the river that George indicated. Where are the markers? Probably being used by those babies out there as back scratches. <laughs> you keep an eye on them for me while I go out and have a look. and cover us from the other side. These things are Mr. Hoy putting up the boys. Over there? Don't worry, I'll be right behind you. Come on, let go. around too much. It doesn't take a lot to set them off. Ugly looking beasts, aren't they? Crazy. I was trying to save your life. That's right. We were all shooting. But he's the one that hit me. You can be sure of it. I'm a better shot than that, Rossi. I'm quite sure it was just an accident. Now, Gil, let me fix this arm. Katimi, later dollar. In Dilbois. Promise, Igor. Wendy! Hey, Igor, you're all right. Hey, Igor, you all right? What do you think? All I know is that Rossi got hurt. How well do you know this, Hastings? Oh, not very well. George had great respect for him. He said that Hastings was one man he could trust. Yeah. Well, that'd be a better recommendation if George were still alive. Come on. Now, that's north. There we are. Our next landmark is that old water well, right? And once we hit there, we should be in business. Then that leaves us only one problem. Watching each other. Well, I'm going to turn in. We start at daybreak. And just to change my luck, I'm going to try sleeping with a gun. Do a little more work on the map. Sure, I can be trusted with it. Not a cheerful crowd tonight, I must say. Perhaps it's not to be wondered at. After all, whoever killed George may not want us to find the mine either. Well, good night, my dear. Night. See you in the morning. Good night.
you say we take a nice little walk? Huh? I'm very comfortable here, thank you. Now, where did we leave off this afternoon? Wherever it was, that's where we leave it. Why? Oh, you've been thinking. Now, look, this is no time for mine to triumph over the matter. You have everything down pat, don't you? All the right little quips in the right little places. Well, what am I supposed to do? Act like I've never seen a girl before? Huh? You're not supposed to do anything, Matt. And there isn't going to be anything between us. I can tell you that. No, wait, how can you tell anything when you're afraid just to be alone with a man? I'm not afraid. Yes, you I'm are. not. Shh. And I'm not stupid enough to hang myself up with the rest of your medals. Matt, oh, that's great. You kiss a guy, and just because you like it, you're afraid it's going to become habit forming. That's all that's bothering you. Nothing's bothering me, least of all you. You're just like all women. The nicer they are, the rougher they play, just so they hook a guy. If I ever hooked you, Mr. Campbell, I'd give up fishing. And what makes you such an authority on women? Experience. That's how I know your type. The minute something happens, you start right in with that good woman pitch. Did I kiss you like one? Sleep well, Buona. Tomorrow we go through my country. Oh, I hope you don't mind sharing with me. I promise you I seldom recite the Psalms in my sleep. Something troubling you? Yeah, that tent boy. Coutini? Hmm. Why? I don't know, a couple of things he said, the way he acts. He's always been very reliable. He comes a very good stock. His father's a chief of the Giriana. Well, that can be good or bad, huh? Right. I must admit, I feel a little concerned myself. I have the peculiar sensation we're a very ill-assorted group. It isn't only you three, but there's a certain uneasiness among the native boys. Well, let's hope it's just my imagination. Yeah. I'll say it was. Two of them. How bad they get me? Huh? Hey, those are nasty cuts. Where are the medical supplies? I'll get them. Well, this time it was Leopard Man. Yeah. Out of way that shirt. Let's take a little. I've been wondering when you were going to show up. Where have you been, romancing a leopard? With one arm? Hardly. I got these scratches dashing through the brush, trying to get a shot at whatever attacked Hastings. You're quite sure you want to push on with this? There's still a danger of infection, you know? I'm not turning back now. Not that I don't trust Campbell. I have other reasons. Well, it's hardly fair to Rossi. I think he was telling the truth last night. Right. Hi. Uh, sorry if I was a little rough last night. Not that I didn't mean it, but, uh, you know, nothing personal. Really? I thought it was quite personal.
Bueno, don't look around now. I think I know who killed your brother. And it was the same man who attacked Hastings. I'll talk to you later. Look at this. Something about a two-hour march to the next landmark. Seems to be some kind of an old ruin. And the mine itself? The mine is just beyond it, an open flat. We shouldn't have much trouble locating that. How about some food? I'm starved. This place is as good as any. Good, Chakula. Upesi. The water in this well is no good, Guana. I must go to the stream. Good, Chakula. Fill canteen. Hmm, good idea. Hey, Matt. Yeah? There's something bothering these boys, and I can't discover what it is. I've noticed it, too. They're usually very happy, but these boys seem to be afraid to speak. Well, just have to keep our eyes on them, huh? was sticking out of his back. He's dead. There's enough poison in these things to kill the moment they hit the bloodstream. But what is it? It's a dart from a pygmy blowgun. There aren't any pygmies within 500 miles of us. Ewa. Ewa, Gilo. Oga, a yo darada, a one law. No, no, a panda. I'm a wasty queen. 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 That's not good. What? What's wrong? They're leaving us. They say this is a bad omen. They refuse to continue with us. That fixes everything just fine. Fork it's him. Yeah, he knew too much. What do you mean by that? Cover those, Uncle Ralph, please. Open this for me. Sure. Later, Cooney. How come these natives didn't leave? They don't belong to Katimi's tribe. I'm gonna miss Katimi. He was a good boy. Yeah. You still think it was leopard men? Don't you? With poison darts? It is strange. All I know is it's not going to be too easy getting to the mine with only three boys. Well, they'd be enough for me if the rest of you want to go back. I'm not going back. I was thinking of Anne and Mr. Hoyt. Thanks, Gil. We can manage. Let's get back to Katimi. If it wasn't Leopard Man, who was it? Well, it had to be somebody with uh, something to gain. You, Gil, or uh, me. I know I didn't do it. That kind of narrows it down a bit, doesn't it? Is coffee ready? Should be. Where's your uncle? He was here just a minute ago. Well, he shouldn't wander away from camp. Mr. Hoyt! Uh, Matt? 
Oh, there you are. I was afraid something had happened to you. No, I'm all right. Just thought I might find some trace of Katimi's killer, but there's nothing. I know. I look, too. Have you any ideas? Well, not exactly, but it had to be somebody in this party. I hate to admit it, but it begins to look like that. But why kill Katimi? He had no interest in the mine. He knew who killed George. Whom did he accuse? He didn't have time. It doesn't help us very much without proof of some sort. He gave me this. A leopard man's claw? I, I don't understand. He found it the night George was killed. Now, look, I'll keep an eye on Hastings and Rossi. But these native boys who stayed with us, maybe they're all right, maybe they're not. You speak their language. Will you keep an eye on them? Matt, do you think we should go on with this? Now, will you? All right, you can count on me. Thanks. May I keep this for a while? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's a good thing I can turn my back on somebody. I was asking him if he could find us some bears from one of the other tribes. He's afraid they'll already have heard that we're supposed to bring bad luck. influence along this coast ever since the 11th century. It looks Arab to me. Well, which way do we go from here? According to the map, it's due south. Not too much further. Then I suggest we split up. Matt, if you'll take Anne, go up the middle. Hastings and Mr. Hoyt are on the right. And I'll go with the boys on the left. Ah. Uh, we'll take the left. I don't want to be in the middle. Suit yourself. Good job. Look at that. Any place around here you can buy some peanuts? We'd better get out of here before they decide we're nosy. you admit you're mad about me. 
Because you always open your mouth and spoil everything. Here is George's marker. Get your Geiger counter, Matt, and we'll go down and see what we got. And Matt, uh, bring a flashlight, too. Right. And hey, what's happened to those boys? Oh, don't worry. They'll be hiding in the brush until we're ready to leave here. They believe that anywhere underground is a home of evil spirits. Yes, and maybe there's some more above ground, too. You go ahead, Matt. I'll stay up here and keep watch. Yeah? I'll stay, too, Matt. Okay. You'll go along with them if you like, Wendy. I'll be all right with Gil. This thing seems to be dead. I'll go up and get another one. Uh, no, I'll get it. Well, thanks. Because I wanted to, Anne. I had to. He was like the others. You... You killed George and Katimi, too. Oh, not George, Anne. He was killed by someone else. Katimi, I had to deal with myself. Not that I wanted to. You know, Anne, I never wanted to take a man's life. Well, then why, Uncle Ralph? Why? How else was I to help these poor people? Was I to let them be driven further and further from the word of God? You don't know what you're saying. It's insane. No, Anne, on the contrary. It's my burden to be sane in a demented age. This land, the animals and minerals in it, belong to a simple people, and I must help them keep it. Am I to let the despoilers pour in with their mines and their fences, driving the natives further and further into the bush, further and further from God? Please, Uncle Ralph, listen to me. Let me take you home. I'll help you. Well, you don't understand. You see, everything has its purpose if it serves God's will. That's why I had to have George struck down. You? You and the leopard men? Of course. I brought them back to life. Everybody thought they were extinct, but they were only dormant, waiting for the proper guidance to be turned into an instrument of good. So far, there are only few. But the word is out now among all the tribes. And when they arise, they shall be as the sword of Jehovah. Then George was killed just because he found the mine. Of course, 
Now I have to deal with Matt and Hastings, too. If only they hadn't discovered the mine. The others, too. They could all be still alive. I'd be so much happier if they were. I'm sorry you saw what happened to Gil. I'd hope to spare you all this. But now... Matt! May not be uranium, but it sure clicks. It's Uncle Ralph. He, he's just killed Rossi. He killed Katimi, too. He's insane. Not too insane to understand this. The well, bolt retainer's gone. You might as well come out now, Campbell. This one's all right. Matt, you kill You can't kill me, you know. Nobody can until my work is done. He is crazy. Where do we go from here? They have arisen. At last, my prayers have been answered. Keep them out. Take Anna, see if you can get through. Hurry up, come on. Come on, Anna, let's go. It's no use, Campbell. Nothing can save you now. This is your last chance, Campbell. Go, Jana, what you yaku hapa? Ndiyo. Wendy. Please understand, then, Campbell. I never wanted this. But I can't let you escape now. You want to do what the other wicked ones have done for years. Go, Jana. Go, Jana. You want to exploit these people for your own profit, your own material ends. That's the only reason I had to revive the Leopard Men. I didn't want to, but somehow I had to protect these gentle people. I had to. It was said that the gentle shall rise and the wicked shall perish. At last shall you follow his will. I've got to kill him, man. They must die. 
Misha! was an evil man. Now he is dead. Your brother's murder has been avenged. What do you know about my brother? I am Katina's father. Palaka Huyu. It was better that we kill this man than that the leopard men should rise again. For they will bring the anger of the white man upon us all. We know we shall have to answer to the priest for his death. But perhaps... The plan will tell how it was. Hey, guess what? Oh, the bank gave you the money for the mine. Yeah, more if we need it. Wonderful. Now, Hastings on his way to London to pick up the machinery. Good. But you never thought of me as a settled now businessman, did you? Frankly, no. Oh, there's some papers there a man left for you to sign. Hey, you're not serious about taking that museum job in New York, are you? You're not going to like it, believe me. It's a big city, a lot of fresh guys around. I'll get used to it. It certainly isn't anything to keep me here. No, I suppose not. Hey. This is an application for a marriage license. You have to have one if you're going to get married. I get married? Why don't you admit you can't live without me?